Mary Berry's foolproof Yorkshire pudding recipe. <laughs> How are you doing today? Great. Me too. Thanks very much for asking. It's November. It's almost Thanksgiving. And this year I thought I might try my hand at bringing something a bit different for Thanksgiving dinner. I'd like to try and make some Yorkshire puddings because we always have a ton of turkey gravy for Thanksgiving. And I don't feel like we have a sufficient number of turkey gravy receptacles at the dinner table. We typically make either yeast rolls or heat up some Sister Schubert's rolls for a Thanksgiving dinner, but instead this year, I'm gonna try some Yorkshire puds. I've never made Yorkshire puddings before, but I have this very helpful Yorkshire pudding mix made by Golden Fry, made in Yorkshire since 1958. You add an egg and some milk, so it's just like our prepackaged baking mixes. I also have on the iPad Mary Berry's foolproof Yorkshire pudding recipe. You can make these in a regular muffin tin. I have a regular muffin tin that I'm going to try, and I'm also going to try this popover tin that I bought specifically for this purpose. Yorkshire puddings are like like our American popovers. So I'm hoping that this will work. We'll see. I mean, you can't go wrong with a mix, right? I can't screw this up. I'm gonna try making the mix first. It says preheat the oven to 220C, 200C fan or gas mark seven. I've got my oven at 425 because it works out at about 428. And surely these things aren't so precious they need it exactly at 428 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so we're gonna empty this into the bowl. Empty that into the bowl. Add 220 mils of cold water and two medium eggs. I have my handy dandy mason cash measuring jug with its milliliter and fluid ounce markings inside. This is what I use when I do my British baking because it's already pre-marked on what it needs to be. The British conversion. It's a bit imprecise because it's only marked at 200 and 300. It doesn't say to make a well, but anytime I've done any baking, I always make a well in my dry ingredients, so I'm gonna do that. And two eggs. I have white eggs. White eggs are much more common in the United States. I typically buy brown eggs, but I was a bit desperate when I bought these. It's what I've got. Plop. Whisk thoroughly to form a smooth batter. Okay. I have a flat whisk because I feel like it gets the bottoms and sides of the bowl a lot better than a regular round whisk. I've never done these before, so I'm not sure about whether there's any danger of over mixing or under mixing, but my batter's not quite smooth yet. I feel like the instructions are a bit lacking for something that's supposed to be easy to do from a box. That looks fairly smooth. Add a little oil into each compartment of a 12-hole cupcake tray. Place in the preheated oven and leave to heat until the oil is sizzling hot between 5 to 10 minutes. Now I know because I read ahead on my Mary Berry recipe that Mary says measure a teaspoon of oil rather than being imprecise and saying a little bit of oil because a little bit can mean different things to different people. So I'm going to do a teaspoon of oil and she says you can use a tablespoon in a four hole tin. I don't have a four hole tin, I have a six hole tin. So I guess I could do like teaspoon and a half in those. Mary's recipe calls for sunflower oil. The box mix doesn't exactly call for any particular type of oil. In my research, you can use vegetable oil. I have olive oil because the only other oil I had in my cabinet was almond oil or sesame oil. And I don't think either of those would be right for a Yorkshire pudding. All right, I'm gonna do a teaspoon to each one of these. What is, aren't you supposed to break the seal? This is just twisting both ways. This is the last time I try and splash out for the fancy oil. John's gonna watch this and freak out and think that I'm gonna cut my finger off. I can't get the lid off. All right, we're switching olive oil to something with hopefully a lid that's easier to open. Now, how easy was that? A teaspoon, a tasket. All right, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
I don't know why I'm counting these. 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'll do like a teaspoon and a half in the other ones. I'm just gonna eyeball at this point. You're just kind of coating the bottom really well. I've got a teaspoon of oil in these, which like I said, just kind of coats the bottom and leaves a little pool. And then I've got slightly more than a teaspoon in these. Pop those in the oven for five minutes. And while I do that, I'll mix up Mary's recipe. Now Mary says, that I need 100 grams or three and a half ounces of plain flour. Nothing fancy, I've just got great value Walmart brand all-purpose flour. 23, 83, 100 on the money. So, oh, oh man, it went down to 99. This is about what 100 grams of flour looks like, but be sure to weigh it, not measure it volume-wise. You should get more accurate bake. I sound like I know what I'm talking about, right? Pop that in here. I need better baking bowls. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. And we're using 225 mils of milk or eight ounces, so a cup of milk. Pour in a little of milk but first. See, Mary knows how to bake. We make a well in the center, as best as one can do in this ginormous mixing bowl. Pour in a little of the milk. I just filled up my little well. Whisk until smooth. Now, Mary says that you can use an electric mixer, or if you're in the UK, an electric whisk. I don't know, I'm too afraid of over mixing it. All right, now we add gradually the remaining milk. I'm not left-handed. This is not doing a good job stirring here, but it's fine. Not quite smooth. It's definitely thinner than the other batter. We'll let that rest until it's time to add our, oh wait, it's thin because I forgot the three eggs. Don't judge me, Mary. I'm very particular at getting everything right. This happens on Bake Off all the time three eggs in this recipe. There's some sort of magic egg to liquid ratio for Yorkshire pudding. I don't know the math, just following what Mary says. Oh yeah, that's much more battery. No wonder it looks so dry. Oh my God, I've probably screwed up the whole chemistry of this. This is the practice. This is the practice round for Thanksgiving. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, when you attend a potluck or a family dinner, you don't bring a dish that you've never made before because you'll just wind up frustrated. So either practice, practice, practice ahead of time or make something that you've made a hundred times and already know how to deal with because otherwise you'll just wind up frustrated. Nobody wants to be frustrated and frazzled before they go to a family event. Pour the mixture into a jug. This is my jug. This is what they call a jug in the UK, measuring cup or batter bowl. Pour that in there. Now, since Mary advises that we pour this into our jug, I'm gonna pour this mix, I think, in that little jug. Now, it seems like I read somewhere, not in either of these recipes, but somewhere that your batter should rest before you pour it in your tins. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's not gonna hurt. This is like when I make tea. Always a bit too full, but that's probably a good two cups of batter there. Watch your oil doesn't smoke because that would be a really bad thing. I'm also really proud of myself for not getting my apron super dirty, especially because I really like this apron. This is my English dinner apron by Victoria Eggs. It's got all kinds of little British foods, mushy peas, roast beef, bubble and squeak, fish and chips. No Yorkshire puds, but that's fine. It's inspirational. Lovely double oven glove from a lovely fiance. I have to pour the batter in when they're really hot. I was going to do Mary's in the big pan, but it may be better to do them in the small pan because there's more batter. This is the mix. Ooh. I don't know how much to put in each one. It just says to divide it evenly. It's very steamy. So I'm gonna put that immediately back in the oven. I hope those little bits on the top don't burn. Do Mary's in the muffin tins. The oil doesn't seem quite as hot in these. It may be. Maybe it is. Yeah, those are bubbly. I feel like I've done a good job metering these out. All right. Into the oven I go. Now I say, don't open the oven door for at least the first 15 minutes and they bake for 20 to 25. So, 
I'm gonna set my timer at 15. In the meantime, while those are baking, I think I'm gonna try my hand at some gravy. Fisto, I haven't made any meat to have any drippings to make my own roux and my own gravy. So I'm gonna try Bisto gravy powder. I've never used this before. I've never used fake gravy before. This calls for four level teaspoons Bisto gravy powder, 280 mils of cold water, meat juices from the roasting tin after removing meat and most of the fat. Let me find my little saucepan. So this is what I think of when I think of a saucepan. Let's open this up. You can get Bisto. I got this at Jungle Gems. You can order it online, or I think you can find it in Kroger or in your grocery store in the international food section, or McCormick and other American brands. We have our own gravy mix. So however you make your gravy, I just thought I'd like to try this British classic. Once again, I can't find my teaspoons. So I've got a half teaspoon and instead of four teaspoons, we're going to do eight half teaspoons. And that is your math lesson for today. It tells me to level it. So let's use the bag to level it. Okay. So now I need 30 mils of cold water. Having looked at this, I have a mason cash spoon rest, which is currently being utilized by the stirring spoon for my chili in the crock pot. But according to that slightly dirty spoon rest, 30 mils is two tablespoons of cold water. So I'm gonna have two tablespoons cold water. Stir that up till it makes a paste. I'm gonna use my tiny little whisk. So this made like a little, just a little brown paste. I mean, it's Thin, you can see. Gradually add 250 mils cold water along with any meat juices to the saucepan and mix well. I don't have meat juices. So instead of 250 mils cold water, I have 250 mils, some good old fashioned chicken broth. Surely that'll work. I mean, John has chicken gravy all the time, right? I don't even know what's in this stove. What do I do with this? Gently bring to the boil, stirring constantly until thickened. Simmer on a low heat for two minutes. Okay, so while we're boiling that, let me just read what's in this bisto. Potato starch, salt, wheat starch, color, onion powder, inactive yeast powder. Contains barley and wheat. Okay, so to me, this is like what we Americans would use as like our Lipton onion soup gravy packet. So this is akin to like a Lipton onion soup gravy. You know, while we're at it, I kind of want to see like what ingredients are in the Yorkshire pudding mix as compared to the minimal ingredients that are in the batter that we mixed up. Because sometimes I wonder, I realize that I'm talking to you while you're just watching me stir a pot. It says to constantly stir it, so that's what I'm going to do. Sometimes I wonder like like whether convenient mixes are really that convenient compared to if we just mixed it up ourselves. Because basically the only thing that should be in that box compared to what Mary had me put in her recipe would be flour and salt. Because otherwise we just added eggs and milk. Flour, which contains calcium carbonate, iron, niacin, and thiamine. Skimmed milk powder, interesting, salt, and dried egg powder. Okay, so in this mix box, it seems like they're just trying to make it a little bit easier on your ingredients. So Mary's recipe called for milk, whereas the box recipe called for water. So you've got your dried milk in there, which are gonna reconstitute, and dried egg powder, which is probably why it only called for two eggs instead of three. Interesting. It's getting really nice and thick, kind of like caramelly. Turn it down, turn it down. We're boiling, we're boiling. Woo! Is this what you Brits would call a saucepan? This is like a, like a two quart saucepan here. I have a smaller one, but. I thought it might like the surface area. This gravy looks good. It looks like roast dinner gravy. I had my first English roast in the Guy Fox pub in Yorkshire. It had a big fat Yorkshire pudding with some sliced roast beef and veg. It was so good. It's supposed to be the inn where Guy Fox was born, but they say they're just capitalizing on the name and really the part he was actually born in, like he entered life, is somewhere in the back garden. I didn't go in the back garden. I sat in the bar area because that's all the seating that there was on Sunday afternoon for my roast dinner. Apparently the Royal Society on Chemistry says that a Yorkshire pudding's not a Yorkshire pudding if it's not at least four inches tall. That's quite the standard. I'm gonna turn this off, it's about time. Stop that. All right, well, we'll take a mini break while these bake and I'll see you in a bit. All right, I think it's about time for Mary's Yorkshire puddings to come out. Those are the ones that we put in the muffin tins. Now the others aren't quite done yet, but they'll probably need about five more minutes because they're a bit bigger. 
Oh my gosh, those look so good. They look exactly as I remember them. I can't wait to fill these with gravy. So these big ones have been in for about 25 minutes now, like probably closer to 30. So let's check them out. I mean, they look golden, but they've not plopped. They don't have a hole in the middle. I don't know what's up with that. I mean, it's crusty. They're definitely done in the middle. Okay, who knows? Is it the pan? Is it the recipe? I don't know. So these, in case you didn't get a good look, this is what the popover pan did versus the quite impressive actually muffin tin. So I'm gonna get these on a plate, turn my oven off, because that's a step I often forget. Pour some gravy on. Find my measuring tape so I can measure these. A Yorkshire pudding's not a Yorkshire pudding if it's not at least four inches tall. It's hollow in the middle, just has a top on. They're about the same. This is the one that I did in the popover tin. And this is one that was Mary Berry's, which was a bit more precise, to be honest. Oh yeah, that looks great. This one's still a bit doughy inside. I mean, it could have had a bit longer in the oven probably, but I mean, they were already dark golden. Hot. It was good. It reminds me flavor-wise of like, if you've grown up in Kentucky, you may have had potato cakes, which is just like leftover mashed potatoes mixed with egg and then fried. Kind of what this one tastes like. The gravy, I mean, it's good. It's like dinner gravy, but it's very salty. Oh, I forgot to measure them. I'd call that a Yorkshire pud, wouldn't you? Yep, no, that's good. Still a bit soft. I mean, they're crispy on the bottom. They're soft on the inside and they're crispy around the top. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be, but they're good. The verdict, I think henceforth and forever, I will use Mary Berry's Yorkshire pudding recipe rather than the box mix. Just because it's so easy, it doesn't contain any ingredients that I didn't already have on hand, and they just genuinely popped and puffed like a Yorkshire pudding should. The gravy was good. I mean, it's gravy. Salty meat flavored juice. Well, thank you for joining me in this experiment. If you liked this video, leave a little like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Have a lovely day and a happy Thanksgiving. Bye!